Welcome to Florida Training Academy. My name is Eunice Mathis. It is a pleasure to be your um, CPR instructor, your VLS instructor, and your mentor to help you through the CPR instructor process. And so I always like to know everyone's why. Why did you become a CPR instructor? What's your goal? Um, my motivation is patient safety. And so everything I do, I think about the patients that I take care of. And so whether it's the CNA courses, the ACLS courses, we're always trying to make sure that we have people who, when they go out into the community, who, number one, um, are not afraid to help someone who could be um, in jeopardy in cardiac arrest, but then number two, who actually knows the steps to take. And you'll be surprised, we have doctors and nurses who will sometimes run away from the cold because they don't want to cause any harm. But when you're running away from the emergency, especially when you're a healthcare provider, that means that you're really not prioritizing patient safety. And if you're prioritizing patient safety, you're gonna learn those ABCs and those CABs. So again, welcome to class. Would you please tell us, Christy, your why? Um, well, <laughs> um, well, it's it, we're working to bring training for our staff at work in house, so that's part of it. But also because for our students, so that way we can make sure that everyone's safe, and I can help train our staff as far as helping to keep our students safe. That's a lot of students. Thank you. So yes, I look forward to helping you. All right, what about you, dear? Um, I've just been involved in a lot of emergencies being a first responder, so I see a lot of people out in the community that just don't know what to do, mm -hmm. and um, I'd like to kind of advocate to get some more information out there for people, and I don't know, I'm just passionate about it. I love it. It's all this energy. I need some of that. Yeah. Siphon it. All right, so what about you, Claudette? Um, I think I, I just, just tag on to what uh, Christy just said, um, is just to, you know, educate people in our community, especially our community. Um, it's just such a need for people to just in situations where they see somebody down and they just, they really just are scared and they don't know what to do. Or now they're waiting for 911. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. with train tracks and everything oh else God. in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. um, that could be five minutes, yeah. it could be 10 minutes, and mm -hmm. we just can't be waiting and doing nothing, waiting for EMS to arrive. And then so. the knowledge base, you know, it's like a lot of people, they see, like, I even talked to my daughter in getting prepared for this class and my husband and asked them questions concerning the whys. And it's like, so I'm healthcare, I'm a nurse, so I know obviously what the whys is of us doing those, mm -hmm. those compressions, but they don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's like sometimes that they know the beauty of why that is so very important and what you're doing in that moment to keep that person alive, mm -hmm. then that would at least maybe ignite a passion in them to at least try something, you know. Don't y'all feel like she took us to church this morning? <laughs> but no, thank you so much for sharing. That's a very important why. Thomas, please tell us your why. Honestly, to piggyback off what she was saying is, I, I doing athletic training um, with high school kids, a lot of these kids don't know anything about their own bodies. And when I'm trying to help them with an injury, I try to explain it to them in terms that they'll understand. Um, so when we have our emergency action plan, I'd like to be able to teach the coaches, you know, and, and instruct them on, on what to do, when to do it, you know, so we have a nice oiled machine. Amen. If there's an emergency in practice, makes perfect. Mm -hmm. You want to be practicing before an emergency happens. We all know mm -hmm. about, was it DeMar Hamlin? Mm -hmm. You know, but how many young athletes prior to DeMar go into cardiac arrest on the field, on the basketball court, etc.? So, but what I do like about your organization is you all really prioritize education and training. And whether you're bringing someone like me to, to the organization to provide the training or building your own in house team, that is incredible. And it's a testament to how much your organization actually cares about its staff and also its students yeah. so kudos everybody all right so on your tables there's a piece of paper we always start off with a review we start off with a review um, all right and so I was saying before that you need to know your ABCs and your CABs ABCs Airway, breathing, circulation, that's your priority before someone goes into cardiac arrest. What does cardiac arrest mean? What happens to the heart? 
it's either not Good. pumping properly or it's not pumping at all. There we go. So the heart is stopped, or at least the circulation is stopped. So there's mm -hmm. no blood flow to the brain. So you focus on ABC prior to the cardiac arrest when you're trying to prevent it. Once someone's actually in cardiac arrest, your priority is no longer airway. What's your top concern? Circulation. Circulation. And then when the team members arrive, when you're in your, in your facility's first aid kit for medical personnel, when the crash cart comes, that's when you can focus on breathing, um, airway and breathing. Um, according to current standards, do you have to provide mouth to mouth? No. no. And so during our classes, we simulate breaths. So if it's something you'll see us with the pocket mask and the one-way valve, we tell our students to simulate breaths because there's no barrier device right now that will prevent the spread of COVID. And I know most of us is like, uh, no, whatever. But if you do contract something and you're going to be hospitalized, you have deductibles, etc., you don't have to take that risk if you just do compression only CPR until those advanced rescuers come and they're going to be using a batter mask device. And so that's what we're going to teach you how to use in order to um, actually ventilate someone. So that was CAB. Brittany, what does ROSC stand for? Return of spontaneous circulation. And if you're teaching a class of high schoolers, that's a huge term. Can you simplify it for me? It means that their heart is now beating again. They have circulation again. There we go. And so I'll say like the pulse return. Okay. Pulse return. And so whatever fancy terms the American Heart Association uses, you have to sometimes simplify those terms based on your audience. Okay. And Claudette, what does the AED stand for? AED, uh, Automatic External Defibrillator. And to help the entire team with one of their test questions, what does the AED, what does that shock do to the heart's rhythm? It tries to, um, the initial stop, shock jolts it back. It tries to give it that electricity to get it back into the correct rhythm. All right, so I'm going to use some terms that you may see again, hint, hint. It's paraphrasing what she just said. The AED normalizes an abnormal rhythm. That normal and abnormal. So you say correction, you know, it corrects the rhythm that's similar. Thomas, how fast do we compress for all ages? Compression rate? Uh, 100, 100 uh, uh, one hundred twenty feet per minute. Perfect. Uh, Peter Christie. It's not on the paper, so you all may want to make note of this. Minimize an interruption. How many seconds max can we take our hands off the chest? 10 seconds. Brittany, this one's hard. And I know you know the answer. You're by yourself. Um, and a victim who's in sudden cardiac arrest vomits while you're performing CPR. Okay. What do you do? I'm going to turn them to their side. Mm -hmm. They're 300 pounds and you're quite slim and I know you're athletic so according to the American Heart Association how many seconds can you take your, your hands off of their chest Ten. so could you possibly turn somebody who's 300 pounds to the side and achieve whatever goal you're trying to achieve and then bring them back and do chest compressions within 10 seconds probably not for so for what's that what's question. that priority C A B what are you going to do compressions so in those 10 seconds if you do have opportunity you can turn their head and sweep out their mouth. Mm -hmm. But the way I want you all to think of it is that um, whatever they would contract or develop from having vomitus in their lungs, such as pneumonia, we can treat that once we get their heart restarted. Right. So the heart is the priority, keep circulating. Brittany, what organs, not Brittany, excuse me, um, Claudette, what organs are we trying to perfuse? The heart and the brain. Okay, good, good, good. So heart, lung, brain. Anything else, I like to joke, it probably wasn't working too well anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so let's keep circulation going. Thomas, what is the ratio of compressions to breaths for all ages what? single rescuer? Uh, 30 to 2. 30 to 2. Christy, two rescuers, child or infant, <clears throat> what's the compression ratio? 15 to 2. 15 to 2. Why do we make that switch? Um, because... They, um, shoot. Well, they think about the, the primary cause of a pediatric arrest. It's breathing. So, so whenever you switch to 15 to 2, you give more of what? You're giving more breath. Awesomeness. Before we actually stand up and do our hands-on practice, what questions do you all have? Can you use an AED on the pregnant mom? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. you can. 
Um, if a person has an implanted pacemaker and defibrillator, you don't know it because usually there's an elevation under their skin, can you still use the external, the AED? Yeah. Yes. yes, you just cannot place the pads directly on top. Mm -hmm. And then at your location, you all have swimming pools. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what would be a difference if you're using an AED on someone who's pulled out of a swimming pool? What do you have to do? Dry them off and move them out of the puddle. How much of their body do you dry off? Their entire body? No. Their chest. Just their chest. Mm -hmm. And like you said, step out away from the puddle. Or if you can, move them down further because mm -hmm. that water is a conductor of electricity. We don't want mm -hmm. you getting shot. Right. All right. So, Christy, you are at the main table, my dear. If I can get you to move your items towards the wall. And then whenever you do stand, would you keep your chair right where it's at? No, I don't need it. Alright, and so um, for those who are watching online, all of the instructor candidates are aware that we are recording. Um, they're actually volunteering to allow us to teach you, so everyone stand up and come over to this workstation. Okay. Alright, so according to American Heart Association, the mannequins have to have feedback devices. So this mannequin, whenever you compress deeply enough, you will hear a click. Hand placement, you'll, t you'll be able to determine when someone's been teaching CPR and been in healthcare for a long time because they'll start measuring intercoastal spaces on the ribs. Most Americans are too fluffy. You can't find a rib on us without a chest x-ray. So what you're gonna do is once you expose the chest, pretend a person has a perfect nipple line, don't press on the xiphoid process, which is at the end of the breastbone. Don't compress on the throat. So a perfect nipple line, pretend. Even if the breasts are pendulous or hanging, just pretend like it's in the center. And you press straight down. How many inches for an adult? Two. Two, two inches. What was the rate of compressions per minute if you're not stopping to get breaths? Minimum one to one. one, one. So this light that's flashing right now, um, red means dead, for lack of a better term. Red means you're not circulating fast enough. And so the feedback device is required. Compression depth, you'll hear the click. Compression rate, your goal is to get two green lights in the shoulder. What happens is um, it hurts. So in addition to getting the two green lights, when you go really fast, you're going to get this fast orange light, which is a reminder for you to slow down. If you get the fast orange light, you are not allowing chest recoil. What does chest recoil mean? For it to come back to its natural the heart position. Fill up. The heart With blood. fills back up with blood. So here we go. And you want to be counting out loud. The goal is to get two green lights. To help you with your instructor test that's going to be happening um, towards the end of the class today, what is the difference between feedback and debriefing? Which one is in real time? Feedback. Feedback. Feedback's in real time. So you don't let a student do all of their compressions with their hands in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Well, Eunice, can you please move your hands to the middle of the breastbone? Okay? Or could you slow down a little to allow for chest recoil? Debriefing happens after like your cardiac arrest, mega cold scenario, or your team performance. And that's how the team actually discusses not the instructor. So if you're used to instructors who are pointing at you, remember every time that someone's pointing at you, there's three fingers pointing back at them, okay? So we try to point at our students. If we actually do a practice where we're working as a group, I would ask you, what do you all think went well? And then I would step back because you all would be the ones who are evaluating each other with love. You'll correct each other with love, but you also have to tell us what went wrong, what went well. What is the sandwich technique? when you're doing evaluations or critiquing your students? Good, good negative, good. Good, negative, good. Mm -hmm. So if the instructor's always negative, 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 mm -hmm. they've not been taught well. All right, so, teach back. Would you please tell me the components, the feedback devices that the American Heart Association requires? <laughs> so it has to be, you, it needs to be audio, so you have to be able to hear the click, and you also have to see the lights. Okay. Sorry, that was not eloquent. No, it's not eloquent. <laughs> and, you're, and you're just learning. So yeah. when you're in front of your students, it's going to, you know, because then by then you'll be, um, you'll understand this more. How do I know if I'm getting the correct um, rate? What will I see in the shoulder? You'll see two green lights. Two green lights. Perfect. 
Thomas, please talk to me about hand placement. I'm going to do some comp compressions. Uh, you're going to need to make sure that you are remove your hand placement up into in between the, the nipples. Okay. Um, and then you're going to try to get two inches deep. Okay. You get the plate. And so for and our population, we use the word nipples. If you say it to your high school students, what are they going to do? <laughs> Just <laughs> laugh. Yes. They're, you're going to like lose your audience. So for them, you can say breastbone. Yeah. Breast <laughs> and I want to see you when you do that. Just joking. He won't do that. All right. Breastbone, too. I heard the nonsense I saw yesterday. Oh, they laugh at everything. All right. So my son, sorry, say away. He's always like, hey, mom, look at this video. No, you kill my brain cells. Uh -huh. It's too fast. I don't watch. <laughs> All right, so um, I want you to critique me because he critiqued me on um, the actual hand placement. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four, okay. five. So it looks like six, six, might be going seven, seven eight with your compression. Eight. And so you want to nine, ten. That's not monitoring depth. What is that monitoring? That's monitoring. Oh, that's monitoring the rate. So what do you want me to do? So you want to speed up uh, the rate of your, but now you're going too fast because <laughs> you're not allowing for the chest recoil. Okay, awesome. So you want to slow down. So what I find works is I would count with my students. So okay. you can say something like, let's count together. Okay. Let's count together. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great job. <laughs> And so now back mass device. Okay. And so we're going to actually simulate breasts. And when we simulate breasts with the back mass device, you're going to be at the head of the victim. So if you think about a code in the facility, and let's talk about this table. Um, the reason why we have the mannequin on the table is because we have a mixed audience. Some of our um, students are going to be working in the hospital sector. And so if there's a code or emergency in the hospital, even if the person does go to the floor, normally put them up on the elevated surface, such as the bed. And your hospital beds have a CPR mode. There's a right. button or a lever that you can pull or you can push. It will um, lower the head of the bed, like instantly. You pull that pillow out, you call the code, you jump on top of the bed and start doing compressions until your team arrives. And then that's when respiratory, whoever will pull the bed away from the wall, the respiratory stands towards the head of the victim. What is the technique that I need to be using? ECC. Okay, awesome. And so I recommend that you um, hold the bag with your dominant hand and the EC clamp technique with your non-dominant hand. Why do we open the airway? So the air can get in? What's yeah. blocking it? The tongue. The tongue. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> so it's not blocked. <laughs> So you're imagining all the questions that your, your high school students are going to be asking. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have an answer for everything. All right, and so how do we know if we're given an adequate breath? What will we see? Chest rise. Right. And I'm feeling air escape, so I'm going to reposition. I like to use my leg in order to keep that airway in place. And we're going to try this again. And I test this equipment this morning, so I don't know why it's like the stranger in front of family. One <laughs> and two. What's wrong with this picture? What's um, going to happen? Oh, yeah. They're also ven yeah. uh, overventilated. Yeah. So what's going to happen to the patient? You get all the air in it. You get like air, you get the tension, you yeah. might pop a lung. You might pop a lung, and I'm also decreasing the quality of my CPR because mm -hmm. now the chest cavity is full of air. Mm -hmm. And so usually when you just see chest rise, it's when you would stop. So it's not trying to squeeze the bag um, in its totality. It's squeezing the bag about halfway. So what technique? EC. E EC. Okay. The C is on the mask and the E is on the chin. chin. Open the airway for our mannequins. Make a tight squeeze and give half squeeze. Quick question. Yes, sir. So you said you'd like to uh, put your leg yes. there. To uh, are you going to be able to do that on a uh, um, hospital bed? Yes, okay. because um, the headboard actually comes off. Okay. And so, yeah, you pull that victim up. No, no, no and, and, that's, and that's a good question so. because the headboard comes off and we're able to do that. Okay. And so back in the day, the headboards were used as our temporary backboards. Oh, uh, gotcha. But those headboards are heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, right. So I think I'm yeah, having some issues. So well, your hand's a little bit too wide. You're just going to hurt your hand. So just get that this. tight mm -hmm. C and you then keep those fingers. Yeah, and lift your body that can get there. Make sure you're putting a lot of pressure down on the gas. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Did you get some chest pain? No? Yeah. Ask 
feel fill it here. Okay, try to tilt your chin up a little bit more. Now get it there. So E C E C. Give more of a breath, maybe you'll be able to feel where it's escaping. Where do you feel it escaping at? I feel like so it's escaping. You might have it, I think you have it too high on the nose. You just want it right on the bridge. Yeah. yeah. There you go. You've got this. <clears throat> okay, and if not, that's why they have respiratory therapists and nurses. There you go. Oh, there, you go. There, it there it is. There, you go. Okay. there it is. All right. All right. So everyone else, go ahead and practice. Sorry and then we'll about start that. with some hand well, No apologies. Yeah, no <laughs> apologies. Women apologize too much. <laughs> I've been learning that lately. I've been <laughs> he, just, he, just, he, just, he just goes right in there and he yeah. has it. All right, so yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, no, you're you're awesome. <laughs> Athletic trainer, and you know, if you ever want a career in nursing, or <laughs> great and then awesome. Last but not least, and so after this, we will team up. Oh, no, you're good. You are good. No, my yes, legs are moving. All right, so a real move. There would be some, you know, counter right. resistance. And so, everybody, um, what two things do we check for before we start compression? Seem um, safe. Seem safe. So, and then as far as your responsiveness with your patient, what do you check for? Pulse and the breath. Pulse and breath. What would be a reason that someone is alive but unresponsive? Lots of reasons. Lots of reasons. <laughs> Give us at least two. Um, Why do we have Narcan? Uh, okay. Seizures. Okay. Um, diabetes. Mm -hmm. So you taking those 10 seconds to assess your patient, tap and shout, check for a pulse, check for breathing is really important mm -hmm. because if someone needs um, glucose, you don't want to be cracking their ribs. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility that you can actually um, crack or break a bone? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. 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 So we're going to sacrifice <laughs> that bone in order to make sure that we have blood circulating to the brain. Mm -hmm. So, seen it safe? Mm -hmm. If the scene is unsafe, what would you do? If the scene is unsafe, you're not going to enter it until yeah. you can make, you're gonna it, make safe. it safe. Uh, yeah. Get rescue. See so, if you can at least go about it that so way. So all of your answers are correct. Can you make it safe? Um, if there is a safe window where you can move the rescuer, I'm mean, sorry, move the injured person, go ahead and move them. Think about Pulse nightclub. Who went into the nightclub first, the paramedics or the police? Pulse nightclub in Orlando, it got mm -hmm. shot mm -hmm. up. Yeah. A whole bunch of injured people. Mm -hmm. Do you all think that the paramedics are gonna go in before the police if they're gonna? No. no. So honestly, from what we have been told, the paramedics didn't go in. They stayed out. And either the people were brought out to them, mm -hmm. and if you were in there, if who's your priority? Someone who's in cardiac arrest or someone who is bleeding? Who's your priority? It is you're the only person. Triaging, you're not going to work a person in cardiac arrest. So mm -hmm. Your bleeding person is going to yeah. be your priority. Probably the person that's yes. more likely to say no. Yes. Safe. And so when you're thinking about those emergency situations, I'm sorry, I don't know what's happening in that building. I can't go in there right now. And if you're bleeding out, I can't make that my priority when I have all these people coming out who are in various stages of need. So triaging they would be the priority and then if the police are in there even though they may have first aid kits that wasn't their priority right then their priority was taking care of the bad guy getting yeah. the scene safe yeah. and so i hate for you to have to be thinking about this stuff but you're going to be teaching people yeah. and you're at schools you're at colleges you're at hospitals and emergencies are happening everywhere yeah. you save those that you can't save yeah. all right so seeing is safe i tap and i shout hey hey are you okay are you okay i point to someone and i say hey you call 911 and come back Okay. Because you're going to get on your phone and be like, man, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> so the person, the person who comes back does not have to be certified in CPR to help me. They can give me a break even without certification. They can do some chest compressions. Um, so call now and want to come back because I checked for responsiveness and the person didn't respond. I don't need to know why right now. I just need to know that I'm getting some help on the way. Now I'm going to check for the carotid pulse on the side nearest me while simultaneously checking for breathing. How many seconds do I get to do this? Less than 10. 10. Less than 10 seconds. Perfect. And so for um, experienced healthcare providers, you're going to hear us say five a whole bunch, but you're dealing with a mixed population. When you're teaching your students, high schoolers, they don't have to feel for a pulse unless they're receiving a BLS certification. If you're doing just basic heart saver, they don't have to feel for a pulse. Why is that? 
what they so what they check for instead is breathing and if a person is not breathing you are to assume they're deceased and start CPR right so I tap my shout agonal breathing so agonal breathing or those irregular breaths with no other sign of life is a precursor of death and you start CPR okay what device do I call for High though. Um, so our videos are really user friendly. Okay. So we actually, even though for our review, we're not mm -hmm. showing the video just yet. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you're teaching your courses for the American Heart Association, they practice while watching. Okay. And so the students will see that in real time in the gotcha. video. All right. So call for the AED. It's going to take a while for it to get there. Um, whenever I go to different locations, because you're going to be teaching corporations also. Hopefully that's the goal. You teach workplaces. Um, you want to see where their first aid kit is, you want to see where their AED is, and I can tell you nine times out of ten, first aid kit's down East Hall, the AED's down West Hall. We need to get those things together so one person can come back with everything. All right, so AED's in route. I'm going to start my chest compressions and stuff for I have my team here. And so, that's, you're here. All right, so let's get in place. And this is a uh, 30 year old, so it's going to be 30 to 2. Okay, let's do five cycles. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Great job. Hover so she can see chest rise. Great job. And then one more cycle, Christy. One, two. And so she found the thing. She's going to reposition her hands. And the doors will keep the airway open. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. We'll take that one and we'll take that one. You all have 10 seconds to switch very carefully. Nine, eight. Seven. All right, great job. Let's switch. Mm -hmm. And go ahead and get it. Got a mask on. Let me get this. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Come on. Christy. Try it again. He keeps compressing while you fix your mask. So you like that. And hover. Right, so we're going to switch out, even though you didn't get the breath. Let's just switch. We'll start okay. set again later. Let's go. Let's go 10 seconds. Let's go. Compress, 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 right. compress. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I think it's probably old school, uh -huh. but do you 
we don't do um, jaw thrust anymore, do no. we? No, no, because you only get 10 seconds. Okay. And so with those jaw thrusts, when you're coming up here, who's doing, you know, if you're by yourself, uh -huh. that's, you're taking away from your compressions. Uh -huh. And even if you do suspect a uh, spinal, spinal injury, injury, we're still not doing the jaw thrust. Okay. When you call EMS, they would bring whatever equipment is needed. So you're just the first step and you've called gotcha. EMS and they're going to, like even with like splitting when you're teaching them first aid, mm -hmm. they're going to recommend that you keep the person comfortable, mm -hmm. but that you allow the medical professionals who actually are on the ambulance to do like a soft splint. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So. What questions do we all have about basics of CPR? Pretty solid. Pretty solid. So I think uh, the jaw thrust thing is probably what's hitting me. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit uh, aged, seasoned healthcare provider. Mm -hmm. I think when I first started CPR, they emphasized that. I also emphasized the airway back in the day too. Yeah. yeah. And everything was airway, right. airway, airway. So based off of research, mm -hmm. that did not improve survival rates. Yeah. Right. And so um, what percentage, and it's actually lower now post-pandemic. And I want to make sure I see the right um, right information. What what percentage of people actually survive sudden cardiac arrest if it happens outside of a hospital? Yeah, it dropped. Mm -hmm. It dropped. Yeah, so we... Say it did read. I'm proud of you. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, you know, I say 15%, but then it just came out again. And then if you're an African-American or Hispanic community, it's even lower. And so it's just, we get out in the community, we teach CPR, we talked about you maybe getting some of your students to be ambassadors who mm -hmm. can come out and help. So they may not be able to instruct the course, but they can clean, they can you know right. help the other students, right. and that would be something and that would also encourage them to go back into the community mm -hmm. and teach CPR. Yeah. Right. And you call for the AED. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the scene, what's the first thing you do? Turn it on. Turn it on. I don't like talking over it, so I might even write a classroom full of students. The video has done some demonstration, mm -hmm. and now I'm going to actually just add to it, but I don't turn this on until the very end. So we have our AED here, and I'll pull this out over here. Okay, so we have our AED. The green button powers it on, and we'll power it on shortly. I remind my students that it's a training device. No shock will be given, because some of them are really excited about using the AED. Not ours. <laughs> Be careful, like I know your company has an AED training device that mm -hmm. it uses. If a company does not have an AED training device, I will um, show them a video on how to use their AED. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, oh, the nurse ha knows how to use it, or the nurse has the key to the AED. And my question is, what if it's the nurse who's in cardiac arrest? Mm -hmm. So everyone I'm needs access to it. <laughs> be like going through her pockets. Like, this is not the time. Everyone needs to know how to work the AED, not just the one nurse. Okay? Right. And so once the machine powers on, for our machine, it's going to say to apply the pads. Mm -hmm. And so the pad placement will be high right, low left. Can you apply the pads on top of a bra? No. no, no clothing. It needs to be exposed, mm -hmm. which is why more women um, die from sudden cardiac arrest if it happens outside of a hospital because of the breast factor. And so they do have mannequins now that either you can add like an attachment that has um, a bra, mm -hmm. who looks like boobs, or you can buy the mannequin that has a more feminine um, anatomy. What law protects a man from sexual assault, lawsuit, etc., if he is exposing a chest to provide CPR? Good Samaritan. Good Samaritan. So men, and, and even if they don't want to expose the chest, and I teach a lot of people, and most of men say, I'm not exposing the chest. And I can imagine from a coach or something dealing with teenagers, that would be traumatic for me. I got all these kids around exposing a young lady's chest. And so we're going to do traffic control. We're going to get non-essential people out of the way. Someone can go and direct EMS. And so those essential persons, if you think about what happened with Demar Hamlin, they actually formed the, yeah, and they went around, and that way they protected and covered the person. Expose the chest. If you don't feel comfortable exposing the chest, perform chest compressions on top of clothing until your advanced rescues arrive. If we don't do anything for every one minute that um, we don't do CPR, what percentage of brain is lost? What number you gave me last time? Ten. Ten. Ten percent. Mm -hmm. And without coffee, I'm already starting off at like seventy or eighty percent. So. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right. So, all right. So we're gonna power on the AED. We're gonna scroll in the chest and follow the prompts. So let me rephrase that to make sure our students can pass the test. You turn it on and you follow the prompts. You listen. Ours is gonna say expose the chest and apply the pads. When we say high right, try to avoid the nipple. And then most students, when they say left, they're gonna put it on the stomach. Think of where the apex or the strongest part of the heart is, and you want that pad nearest there. 
Next is going to say connected, and usually where you connect your pads will be flashing, and we're just going to insert. It's going to say analyzing heart rhythm. When it's analyzing, it's trying to determine whether or not a shock is needed. But if I'm touching, it's going to pick up your heart rhythm. So what do we say when it's analyzing? Clear. Now it gets tricky, because if you're teaching basic life support providers, these are professional rescuers, it's going to say charging. When it's charging, we're not interfering with anything. We're supposed to go back and do more compressions. Yeah. And then once the charge has been fully, um, once the energy is towards the pads, this is going to be flashing. But what do you say before you press shock? Clear. 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 And then you press it. There's going to be a beep. Beep, 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 beep. What is that beep for and what is it called? And it's shock has been advised. Mm -hmm. It's shocking, isn't it? So mm -hmm. after the shock. Oh, oh, to make sure they ever to go back to CPR. So it's called the metronome. Oh. And the metronome helps you keep your pace with your compressions. Mm -hmm. And so your compression rate should match the beat. Beep, beep. That way you won't go too fast, you won't go too slow. Any AHA training device or AHA um, or any AED, that's a real AED, if it corresponds with a, um, AHA guidelines, it's going to have that metronome. Mm -hmm. There's also an app you can download, it's called Pulse Point. My problem with that app is that so many people, so let's say you're in the mall, you're in the unfamiliar area, it's going to alert everyone else who has that app. I need you to call 911 first, and then you access that app secondary, secondarily, okay? Because I don't want you just going to an app and then 911 never comes. But the app will let you know the location of the nearest AED, and will also provide you with a metronome, okay? Is that like almost some kind of AHA endorsement at all? Mm -hmm. A, the AHA does not, um, how do they say, they don't promote um, any particular product. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know, right? Well, I was just curious because it sounds like it has very unique uh, so, advantages. I don't so know of like, another yeah. one that's advertised as much as they have. And it's called Pulse Point. Pulse Point. And so if there is another one, and if you do find another one, let me know. It's just they're the ones who advertise. So that's the name I remember. Oh, cool. All right, here you go. All right, you arrived to the scene. My captain represents chest compressions. She's taking one for the whole team, everybody. So I'm going to turn on my machine. Should I turn it on? Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. Are we hoping? Are we not? You, you can. Yeah, Apply you can. pads. Plug in connector. Analyzing heart rhythm. Clear. I'm sorry. <laughs> remember when it says shock advised or charging? Tell me to compress. Shock advised. Clear. No. Charging. Compress. And don't move into those lines. Stay clear of patient. Deliver clear. shock now. Clear. Press the orange button now. Now press clear. <laughs> so you should have kept going <laughs> until. Keep going. Shock now what happened? Delivered. The shock is delivered back on the chest. Compression is easy. What's that tone called? Uh, that's the metronome. That's going to be your pace. Uh, okay, calm down. Calm down. All right. <laughs> She's in. She's in. She's in. All right, so don't leave me yet. It's the coffee. I want you to power off the AED, but then I want you to tell me, your student, mm -hmm. that I'm turning the AED off for classroom purposes only. So turn it off. Okay. Because your students are going to do exactly what you do. So I'm, I'm turning the AED off for... Um, classroom purposes only press that button. so we're going to press this button okay and so the reason why i say that is because i will ask the student what do you do next and they're going to say turn it off because they saw me turn it off right mm -hmm. but if he still even that if he state, regains a pulse this still needs to stay on it him. needs to stay on and that needs to still be part of yes. the protocol i say until their last they reach their final destination so mm -hmm. if they're at a school um, ambulance. When ambulance comes, they put their AED on. That's when we turn off the school's AED. Right. If you're in a nursing home, EMS comes, so we're going to keep that on because that person can regain and lose a pulse multiple yeah. times. Oh, yeah. How frequently will the AED reanalyze? Every two minutes. Every two minutes. And so that's your prompt for your compressors to do what? Switch. Switch, Switch out. out every time it reanalyzes. If the person regains a pulse, <clears throat> you can feel it. They're breathing. What position do you put them in? Recovery. What's the recovery position? To the left, left side. side. Unless it's contraindicated because if you have a knife or a gunshot or something, then you turn to the right. Why do we put them on the left? See, like, wait, 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 w
you have your lungs, you have your stomach. We turn to their left because we think we're, we we turn them because we think they're gonna vomit. Right. And if they're on their left and they vomit and it doesn't all come up, hopefully it goes back down into the stomach. But if you have them on the right and it doesn't go out and it goes down, it goes into the lungs. They ask for another problem. What questions do y'all have about the AAV? How do you feel? Um, you also make sure that the pads are sticking. Yes, yes, and so we didn't so fill in sticks from the it, it No, make, I'm just saying. Sure, does it make a difference? Um, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, which pad, because I was looking at that while I was, and it just kind of really messed me up, because it's like, oh, this one is supposed to be a pit. This one's supposed it to be an image. Does it really I need you to yeah. go yeah. with what the image says. Okay. Okay. Right. Just okay. go with the picture, because when there's an emergency and when there's a lawsuit, mm -hmm. Yeah. They'll be like, this nurse couldn't even get her pictures right. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> they're going to be questioning oh, where you got your so nurse. I just didn't hard. know whether or not like that. So, would so you would have to consult the manufacturer's gotcha. guidelines and the manual. The easiest much. thing to do is to go with the picture placement that's on the pad, gotcha. and that way you can make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. What was your question? No, it, was, it was more of a statement mm -hmm. uh, saying that as far as like, if you have an extra set of pads mm -hmm. and somebody has like a very hairy yes. chest. Are they, yeah, I was going to ask if they were still saying to do that, to yes. like do the impromptu wax job. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so right. um, your school, and I know Christy um, knows this answer, you have a 10 year old who's 115 pounds, who's five feet. Is that a, is that a child or an adult? 115 pounds, five feet tall, 10 year old. That's that's an adult. It's an adult yeah. presenting pediatric. So you have to treat him or her as an adult. Okay. Any signs of puberty, adult. Oh, that that weight, weight, that height, adult. And so the pad placement would be like, get them in the right place like this. Yeah. Right. But if it was a smaller child and the pads possibly would touch or it was an infant, where would you place your pads? Front and back. Front and back. And so I said that to answer your question. Gotcha. Whenever you have somebody who has a hairy chest, mm -hmm. It better be a full-grown adult. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to question some stuff. You're going to take those pediatric pads. Okay. Apply those to that hairy chest and then do an yeah. impromptu wax yeah. job. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, check your first aid kit and your AEDs because right. usually they have a razor. Mm -hmm. But then also be mindful that when you're shaving, the razors usually are not that strong. Yeah. When you're shaving someone in an emergency, you couldn't nick them and then you have to be worried about blood on pathogens. Right. Mm -hmm. I would just use tape. Like some tape. Duct yeah. tape, man. All your first day kids need some duct tape. Duct tape does wonderful it things. Does. Yeah. It does. <laughs> it does. All right, so what other questions do we have about the ADV? All right, would you please, um, and so we have diversity pack for the mannequins. When I say we, just they're available to instructors. I recommend you get a diversity pack um, because I just think it's more realistic and it's what you're going to see out in the actual general population. So if all your mannequins are the same skin tone, or even the same sex. It's what, 2022, we just got mannequins that had female parts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're giving people the impression that women don't go into cardiac arrest mm -hmm. and or that brown people don't go into cardiac arrest. So we want to make sure we use diversity. So would you please get us a um, fair skin and infant mannequin? Thank you so much, Thomas. And would you, would you get one of those pediatric bags on top, please? Yes, thank you. Well, yeah, I guess this is enough. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so you all, from the manufacturer, these babies are hard to back sometimes. And so what I like to think of is whenever you're going to be giving a breath to a baby, you don't want to overextend his or her airway. Um, but unfortunately, we may have to because of this manacle. So let's see if they're going to do what they need to do today. So, and I will teach you how to troubleshoot your mannequins. And this one is not presenting. So let me get another bag. Sometimes if it's the bag, it could actually be the baby. Baby, wake up. I know, I know. Hey, baby, 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 are you okay? <laughs> In the field, like 90% of the time, we're putting towels up under the shoulders. Yes. Okay, to help. To so help you're actually the airway. We, we do that. We do it, we do it in the ER, too. Yeah. yeah. So, especially with the babies, because unfortunately I've been to a lot of those. So. Okay. That helps. All right, so this one's working. Okay. Feedback devices are not required. Oh, let's go back to the adult mannequins. Mm -hmm. For American Heart Association purposes, the adult mannequins are used for adult and child CPR. Child CPR, you can use one or two hands, but a child 
as someone who has not reached puberty. Now, um, if you're doing one-handed CPR and you are not sure that you're compressing two inches, if that child doesn't survive, what is going to be your thought for the rest of your life? I should have used two hands. So I recommend, we're not talking about infants right now, we're talking about children. I still recommend using two hands on a child because you still have to compress two, two inches. inches, okay? Um, why would a child go into cardiac arrest? Usually some respiratory, yeah. respiratory, respiratory, exactly. So with an adult, single rescuer all ages until they're intubated, or multiple rescuers also, it's going to be 30 to 2. <laughs> but when a child or an infant is 30 to 2 only until you have help. Once help arrives, we switch to 15 to 2. And what's that reason? What are we giving more of? Breath. More breaths. Because, and you can't do that by yourself. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can breathe 20 breaths per minute and give a child or an infant 20 breaths per minute. So when you're by yourself, it's 30 to 2. Your team comes, it's going to be 15 to 2. If you are giving a, if you're providing mouth to mouth to an infant, what does your mouth go? Mouth, mouth and nose. Mouth and nose. If it's a child or an adult, you would squeeze the nostrils and then put your mouth over their mouth, do the head, tilt, chin, left. Do you have to provide mouth to mouth to anybody? No. No. That's why we're teaching you how to use the bags. Your priority is CAB. All right, so we talked about the adult mannequins being used for adult and child CPR. Infant mannequins do not require a feedback device at this moment. However, I just like that all of our mannequins are uniform. They're all flesh toned. If you buy the mannequins that have the feedback device, the buttons in the diaper. Now you should joke with the students and tell them to you know, press the diaper and nothing's going to come out. Because if you think about historically, you press the diaper, <laughs> it's going to be a little tingle. All right, so um, Brittany, what feedback devices? Do we have? Mm -hmm. uh, we have to have some kind of audible click okay. to know the depth is good. And then we have our lights to tell us the rate. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so can I please get you to stand over here? Mm -hmm. All right, and so would you please demonstrate, actually it's three different hand techniques. Would you please demonstrate the two-finger hand technique for compressions? Let's start two-finger. Perfect. Two-thumb encircling hand technique. Awesome. And this is one that you all may not be aware of. Someone can have arthritis, they've got missing fingers, they can still provide CPR on an infant. Palm of the hand. So if your students, thank you so much, if your students can't perform compressions one way, give them their options to make sure that they can compress. For an infant, how deeply are we compressing? One and a half. One and a half inches. Okay. Can we go? Yes, let's go. 15 to 2. It's two of us, so if you'll do the two thumb and circling hand technique. All right. Let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Let it went through. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, Remember, I don't make the equipment. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. One and two. Would you do make sure of Christy? Mm -hmm. Keep going. One, two, would you get the AED? Four, five, six, seven. Come on, baby. We're going to intubate you if we don't get these lungs to rise. 15. One and two. Dog Christy? Here with the AED. I'm going to turn it on. Six, Just to, uh, for review purposes, if it is an unwitnessed arrest, mm -hmm. you perform CPR 
for two minutes yes. before calling 911? Yes. Okay. And so that's assuming you don't have a cell phone right there that you can right. speak your phone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And um, the reason being is so we can get some confusion to the brain. Okay. I'm not going too slow or too fast. Too fast. Well, you got to count too, baby. Count for us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, count got eight. Eight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> count is like. Okay. Before, before. You know like music? You know, stay alive. You like music? You yeah. go stay okay. alive. Go with the beat. I need you to substitute the word unresponsive or unconscious with the word dead. A choking victim is now dead. What do you do? CPR. 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 Um, when would you look for the obstructing object? After, after, yeah. after the no. first set of... When they first go down. First round of compression. Like when you're checking for... No? So when you would go to give a breath. So okay. after your 30 uh, compressions, okay, yeah. you would look in the mouth to see if you see the obstructing object. If you see it, what do you do? Oh, no. If you don't see it, keep, keep, going, going. You keep going. You can try to get two breaths. We know it may not go through because there is a blockage there. On your own bodies, please show me how to do the Heimlich family suit. So yes. it's not called the Heimlich maneuver. What is it called? Formally referred to as the Heimlich maneuver. It's abdominal thrust. thrust. <laughs> All right, so you're going to make a fist and I cause the fulcrum. That knuckle of your thumb, take that towards the skin, above the belly button, lower than the xiphoid process. So someplace in between. Cup your fist. And you're going to do an upward and inward thrust. And you would do this until the object dislodges or the person goes limp. If they go limp, you put them on the ground. Does a child or an infant have to be totally dead before you start CPR? No. 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 Less than 60. Less yeah. than 60 signs of poor perfusion. African American usually don't turn blue. How would you know if we have signs of poor perfusion? You should Grayish color. Grayish. Yeah. It's just like so odd. It's like mm -hmm. you turn gray. And also, don't forget about those capillaries. Yeah. Those hands and stuff are pale. That's a sign of poor perfusion. Pregnant woman. How do you help a pregnant woman who's choking? Who's up a little higher. So, right? always avoid that xiphoid process. But it's like center in the chest. Oh. Yeah, we're going straight mm -hmm. in. Not like a, a sternal rub. You're going straight in. Remember, we want to avoid that. Uh, next one would be baby. You can be seated. Yes. Um, I'm not suffocating the baby. I'm actually aligning his or her spine because they got the bobblehead head syndrome, the big the bigger <laughs> bigger heads. One, two, three, four, five. And you can do it kind of gently sometimes, because I be seeing y'all do this and I'm like, oh my God, back injury. <laughs> All right, so five times. After five, you rotate to the opposite extremity and it's gonna be chest thrust. These are not um, compressions. And as an instructor, you're going to be telling a student that they're compressing. And this is not a compression. This is a chest thrust. This baby's still alive. A compression is when the heart is stopped or is less than 60. One, two, three, four, five. It's funny that she said that mm -hmm. you feel like most people don't hit hard enough. Or mm -hmm. hit, hit too hard because I feel like most people don't. Well, I think in our classes, they're, they're moms, and they're like, yeah. man, I've done this 50 times. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, I can. Yeah, we're the opposite. We're like, like, like I've to do this to my youngest. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And so there, you're going to. I almost have to do that to my youngest. It's yeah. scary. Yeah. Yeah. So it for like scary. someone who doesn't have kids, they're usually going to be more soft and more right. sensitive. I don't want to hurt the baby. But, yeah. The other ones are going to be like, boom. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to do chest PC on a baby? Or just like. Boom, boom, boom. Get all up. All right. So once you see the object, try to use your smallest finger. We all have different size hands here. And so if you think about those students who have bigger fingers and they're in the baby's mouth trying to remove the object, use the pinky, do a sweep. And now we got the object up. Life is good. Baby smiling. I just put baby in the crib and go back home with my life. What, what, what should we do? Watch the baby. Watch the baby. Watch the baby. Yeah. Watch the baby. Yeah. Your baby swallowed a battery. 
Oh no, you go to the ER. Oh, yeah. you, you go yes, to the ER. Yes, yes. Yeah, like, or they could have swallowed two things, and, and there was one mm-hmm. mom. They were only able to get a part of it up. She just kept taking the baby to the doctor. Kept taking the baby to the doctor. It was to the point where the, the now child wasn't thriving, had a failure to thrive, wasn't gaining any weight, had a very smell, a foul smell coming from her body. They finally did a CAT scan. It was in there. It was in there. Oh, we're talking about a year. Oh. <sighs> What? Yes. Oof. Yes. Oh, the x-ray didn't catch it. Oh. Mm. I love you all. You all help save lives. What questions do you all have? You want, need a quick break before you take your test? 